Vital signs reflect essential body functions, including your heartbeat, breathing rate, temperature, and blood pressure. Your healthcare provider may watch, measure, or monitor your vital signs to check your level of physical functioning. Normal vital sign change with age, sex, weight, exercise capability, and overall health. Normal vital sign ranges for the average healthy adult while resting are for blood pressure, it is 90 over 60 millimeter of mercury to 120 over 80 millimeter of mercury. For breathing rate or for the respiratory rate, it is 16 to 20 cycles per minute. For pulse rate, it is 60 to 100 beats per minute. For temperature, it is 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius. And lastly, the oxygen saturation, it is 98% to 100%. It refers to the temperature inside the body or core body heat. It can be measured by five basic routes, the oral, rectal, axillary, tympanic, and temporal. Take note, do not take rectal temperature when a person has or had rectal surgery or has bleeding hemorrhoids. Digital thermometers are quick to use, accurate, and can be used under the armpit. Here are tympanic thermometers. They are expensive, and the reading may not be accurate if the thermometer is not correctly placed in the ear. Two kinds of ear thermometers, the infrared thermometers and strip-type thermometers. Mercury thermometers. It is haven't been used in hospitals for some years and are no longer available to buy. They can break, releasing small shards of glass and highly poisonous mercury. Alterations in body temperature include pyrexia or hyperthermia, hypothermia, and normothermia. For hyperthermia, the temperature is above normal limit or above 37.5 degrees Celsius. For hypothermia, the temperature is below normal limit or below 36.5 degrees Celsius. And for normal thermia, the temperature is within the range of 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius. Factors affecting body temperature include age, the urinal variations, exercise, hormones, stress, environment. Pulse. It is a wave of blood created by contraction of the left ventricle of the heart. The pulse wave represents the stroke volume output or the amount of blood that enters the arteries with each ventricular contraction. The areas that are called the pulse points includes temporal, carotid, apical, brachial, radial, femoral, popliteal, dorsal pedalis, and posterior tibialis. Take note, when taking the pulse rate, do not take it with the thumb, since it has a pulse of its own. Tachycardia is a pulse rate that is above the normal limit or above 100 beats per minute, while bradycardia, it is below the normal limit or below 60 beats per minute. Quality of pulse is determined as well as rate R, rhythm, and strength. For rhythm, it is either regular or irregular. For strength, it is either bounding or threading. 
Factors affecting pulse rate includes body temperature. When the temperature increases, the pulse rate increases. Emotions are stress. In response to stress, stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system increases pulse rate. Activity level, health of heart, and age. With age, when it increases, the pulse rate decreases. Respiration is the act of breathing. It includes inspiration and expiration. Inspiration or inhalation, it is the intake of air into the lungs. While expiration or exhalation, it refers to the breathing out of air from the lungs to the atmosphere. It can be measured by observing chest rise and fall or chest movements. The kipnia is above normal limit or above 20 cycles per minute, while bradipnia it is below the normal limit or below 16 cycles per minute. Difficulty in breathing is called dyspnea. Quality of breathing is determined as well as the rate of breathing or depth, clarity of breath sounds, pain with breathing, and difficulty in breathing. Factors affecting respiration includes exercise, stress, increased environment temperature, and increased altitude. Remember, the respiratory rate decreases when a person is in high altitude. With the procedure for taking TPR or vital signs, we need to assess clinical signs of fever, clinical signs of hypothermia, clinical signs of cardiovascular alteration other than pulse rate, rhythm, or volume, factors that may alter pulse rate, position assumed for breathing, signs of cerebral anoxia, chest movement, chest pain and dyspnea, signs and symptoms of hypertension, signs and symptoms of hypotension. The equipment needed for the procedure includes thermometer, wet and dry cotton balls, watch with second hand or indicator, stethoscope, sphygmomanometer, and kidney basin. Before beginning your skill, always make sure that you wash your hands. The next set of skills is temperature, pulse, and respirations, and taking a blood pressure. The supplies that you'll need are an electronic thermometer, a temperature sheath, a manual blood pressure cuff, stethoscope, alcohol, and cotton balls. Hi Beth, my name's Mari. I'm going to be your aid today. How are you? I'm good. I'm here to check your vital signs, okay? Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is raise the bed up to a good working level for me. I'm going to raise the head of the bed. First, I'm going to check your temperature. I'm going to clean the thermometer with a small amount of alcohol in a cotton ball. The thermometer goes in the plastic sheath between the two plastic pieces. I'm going to turn the thermometer on and wait for it to say it's ready. The thermometer goes under the tongue and in the back of the mouth. All right, your temperature is 98.6, Beth. I'll take the thermometer sheath off and place it in the trash can. The next thing I'm going to do is check your pulse and respirations. I'm going to use the first three fingers on my left hand and I'm going to hold her wrist so that I can feel where the pulse is. All right, your pulse is 82 and your respiratory rate is 20, Beth. I did not tell you that I was checking your respiratory rate because I didn't want you to change the way you were breathing for me. 
All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is obtain your blood pressure. I'm going to place the blood pressure cuff above the crease in the arm with the marking over the inside part of the arm. I want to make sure that this blood pressure cuff is snug and secure. I'm going to use the stethoscope and the first thing I want to do is clean the earpieces with an alcohol wipe and the head of the stethoscope. The stethoscope is placed on the inner part of the arm along the crease so that it's over the artery. I'm going to pump the blood pressure cuff up to approximately 180 millimeters of mercury and listen carefully. I slowly release the air from the blood pressure cuff. listening for the thudding sound. One thirty eight over eighty four, Beth. I'll remove the blood pressure cuff from her arm and set it aside. Before using the stethoscope, it's always a good idea to make sure that the earpieces are pointed toward, forward towards your nose and that you check to make sure that the head of the stethoscope is on the right side. Now I will clean up the rest of my supplies and make sure that I've repositioned Beth for comfort. The head of the bed should be at 30 degrees. The side rails will be up if they're ordered. Returning the bed to the low position and making sure that Beth has her call light in reach. Are you comfortable, Beth? Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. At the end of the skill, record and report. After taking the vital signs of your patient, you must record or plot it in a TPR chart. TPR plotting are graphics that are special records used in recording the temperature, pulse, and respiration rate of your patient. So they are used most often in hospitals and long-term care facilities, but can be used in medical offices and other healthcare facilities. They present a visual diagram of variations of your patient's vital signs. I have here a sample of TPR chart from Silliman University Medical Center here. So the same with after, we will use black ball pen in a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift, blue ball pen in a 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. shift, and red ball pen in 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. Here you can see the TPR chart from Silliman University Medical Center. You can see here the name, the bed number, the date, the hospital days of the patient, the temperature, respiration, pulse and blood pressure, and there is also for the stools and for the urine. So you can write here uh, 8, 8 a.m. when you, uh, the, the time you've got the vital signs of the patient. So first, you will encircle the normal values of the temperature, respiration, and pulse, and pulse. So for heart rate, you encircle it with red. For the respiratory rate, you encircle it with blue or black. It depends on the institution. And for the temperature, it is also blue or black and depends with the institution. After that, you will plot the vital signs you've got from the patient. So here I have a sample vital signs, temperature 37.2 degrees Celsius, respiratory rate 17 cycles per minute, 
and pulse rate it is 87 bits per minute. So I will start to plot these vital signs. For temperature 37.2, you will locate where is 37.2 here inside the box. So the temperature here, each box contains 0.5 degrees Celsius. In respiration, each box contains 5, 5. Then for the pulse, it contains 10. So let's uh, plot the temperature. Let's look at the 37.2 degrees Celsius. Here. For respiratory rate, 17 cycles per minute. Here. For the pulse rate, 87 beats per minute. Here. After that, you will use a ruler or anything that has a straight, straight edge to connect the normal values and the, uh, the plotted vital signs.